The Bedford OB. One of the most well-known classic out-front engine bus designs from the UK. But, believe it or not, this is also a Bedford OB. This is the story of the Australian streamlined Bedford OB buses, the bus that arrived from the future. Hi, this is Jeffrey, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Bedford OB. It's one of the classic engine out front buses that was developed and manufactured in the UK starting in 1939. Now, production was curtailed because of the war, but resumed shortly after the end of World War II. Now, not only did the UK have Bedford OBs, but so did countries like Australia. Now, at first, Australia had the conventional designed Bedford OB. However, GMH, which was the General Motors uh, subsidiary in Australia, wanted something different. They wanted something bold. They wanted something dramatic. And so they developed the Australian Bedford OB, which was like no other bus that had existed previously to it. So that's what we're going to look at, the Australian Bedford OB. Now, before I start this video, I also want to thank driverclassics.com.au for giving me permission to use material from their collection, which are photos and other types of documents and information for this video. So I want to thank them for that, and I'll speak a little bit more about them at the end of this video. So let's get started in taking a look at the Australian Streamlined Bedford OB. In 1931, General Motors UK launched the Bedford range of local light trucks and buses heavily based on the existing Chevrolet chassis. The Bedford OB was designed as a successor to the 1930s Bedford WTB. The first Bedford OB was built in 1939 but stayed in production for only two months with just 73 being built when all of Bedford's production was turned over to the war effort. During the war years, in addition to truck production, Bedford, which was GM's UK commercial vehicle brand, produced 3,398 OWBs. The Bedford OWB was a wartime austerity version of the Bedford OB combined with bodies that were even more austere. Bodies were designed by Duple and built by Duple along with other coach builders to Duple's design. Post-war production of the Bedford restarted at GM's Vauxhall Bedford Luton UK plant in October 1945. Bedford built 12,766 post-war OBs in the UK with O-series production finally ceasing in 1953. Australian bus bodybuilders such as Sid Wood and Grice initially built bodies on Bedford OB chassis with conventional layout. However, this practice was curtailed with the arrival of General Motors Holden's own body design on the Bedford OB chassis. General Motors Holden of Australia, also known as GMH, began offering Bedford OBs as complete buses in 1947. GMH Australia imported the Bedford OB chassis from GM's UK Vauxhall Bedford division, designed the body, built the body, and began selling Bedford OBs as complete buses rather than body on chassis. But GMH wanted an all-metal forward control bus that was modern, different, and bold with a design that would set a new standard in Australia. GMH constructed a scale model of the Bedford OB that was completed by February of 1946 to assist with the building of a full-size prototype OB bus at GMH's Woodville Adelaide plant. GMH's Bedford OB body styling of the model was dramatic. With enclosed wheels, the use of fluted aluminum brightwork, and of course a fully flat front, all quite radical for the day and quite different to anything else on the market. 
the enclosed front wheels were to hide the narrow front width of the 1930s Bedford OB conventional chassis design with the benefit of enabling the streamlined look that GMH was after. The 1946 GMH Bedford OB was an odd mix of 1930s British chassis design with a modern Australian body influenced by American styling trends. GMH decided to complete the modifications of the Bedford OB chassis locally at its Fisherman's Bend, Melbourne plant. Conventional Bedford OB chassis would arrive from GM's Vauxhall Bedford UK plant in complete knockdown form where they were assembled and modified to forward control. Compared to the conventional engine out front buses of the day, the Bedford OB looked more like a spaceship had landed. The all-around aluminum lower brightwork styling feature appears to have been borrowed or at least influenced by GM USA's unique Parade of Progress display buses used in Motorama shows throughout the USA at the time. Three Bedford OB prototypes of differing lengths and seating capacities were built by GMH in 1946. The first prototype, bus number one, was a 27 passenger completed at GMH's Woodville plant at the end of March. Prototypes number two and three, one being a 31 passenger model and the other a 21 passenger version, were built later at GMH's Fisherman's Bend plant in Melbourne. A noticeable design difference between the scale model and the full-size bus was the addition of elaborately styled park light fittings on each side above the front bumper. These beautifully designed fittings were added to cover a protruding steering arm on the driver's side of the bus, owing to the modification from conventional to forward control layout. Two options were offered, a transit bus and a parlor coach. For the transit bus, the options were number one, 21 or 27 passengers with a 174 inch wheelbase, number two, 31 passengers with a 201 inch wheelbase. For the parlor coach, the options were number one, 19 passengers with a 174 inch wheelbase, and number two, 27 passengers with a 210 inch wheelbase. Some of the general features promoted by Bedford for the new OB were number one, interior comfort and spaciousness for both driver and passengers. Number two, modern exterior appearance with an impressive front end. Number three, economical performance that included a 27 horsepower cylinder overhead valve engine. Number four, full floating rear axle, and number five, progressive action rear springs. In common with all models was that, number one, entrance step height was 14 inches, number two, floor height at aisle was 28 inches, and number three, headroom was 6 foot 2 inches. The Adelaide-built 1946 Bedford OB prototype, body number one, was soon after acquired by Mr. and Mrs. Jones from Smithton, Tasmania, with 4,000 miles on the clock for use as a school bus and for charters. At its retirement from passenger work, Mr. Jones estimated that the OB had covered over 1 million miles and carried well over 1 million passengers. The impending introduction of GMH's new Holden motor car required all resources to be redirected to Holden car production. GMH needed to find a different way of building bodies on its Bedford OB chassis. By mid-1948, GMH began outsourcing the bodybuilding task to Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation, also known as CAC, of which GMH was a shareholder. CAC was located nearby the GMH Melbourne plant. CAC was a builder of aircraft, but as World War II had recently ended, CAC was looking for additional work to maintain its staff levels. 
The contract offered by GMH suited CAC, so they began building buses right alongside aircraft production lines. GMH established exclusive distribution of Bedford OBs through its dealer network while withdrawing the opportunity for other bus bodybuilders from building on the Bedford OB chassis. The Bedford OB was hugely successful for GMH in Australia with 932 produced plus the Adelaide prototype from 1947 until 1952 at which time it was replaced by the larger forward control Bedford SB series. The Bedford OB was a workhorse of a relatively basic design. Drivers and owners either loved them or hated them, sometimes at the same time. The high-pitched whine of the transmission was perhaps its most notable and endearing feature, but above all it was cost-effective and reliable, characteristics sorely needed after World War II. There is at least one fully restored Australian Bedford OB. The Driver Group, a quality family-owned bus operator founded in the early to mid-1920s by brothers Eric Merchant Driver and Reginald Allen Driver, were able to obtain a Bedford OB for restoration. The bus was purchased from the Victorian Bus Preservation Association in May of 1996 and received a complete ground-up restoration. This specific OB was once used as a motor home. It was built as a Bedford transit bus model featuring the long 201-inch wheelbase and 31 passengers. It now represents number three from the Driver Brothers fleet in 1947. Bedford OB number no. 3 was publicly unveiled in November of 2007 at the historic Commercial Vehicle Motor Show at Sandown in Melbourne. So, there it is, the story of the Australian Bedford OB. Now, while the Bedford OB in Australia was nearly the same mechanically as the Bedford OB in the UK, what sets it apart, of course, is its aesthetic design because the styling on the Australian Bedford OB is really something only that was seen on concept buses and not really ever on production buses. Now, the driver group of Australia, which is a major uh, charter bus operator, has one in their possession. It is part of their heritage uh, fleet collection and it's fully restored and it really looks fantastic as you had seen in the video. Now the website is driverclassics.com.au and the driver group actually owns a significant fleet of heritage uh, vehicles such as buses, automobiles and trucks and so on their website they have articles on every one of their restored uh, vintage heritage vehicles and it's a really great uh, thing to look at. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Australian Bedford OB. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye.